is the beard trend for men finally winding down? Seen on celebrities, sports stars, and hipsters everywhere, the beard never quite made it to the boardroom, but seems to be practically everywhere else. Still, is the heyday over? Here to discuss is WSJ reporter Jacob Gallagher. Jacob, great to see you. Good to see you too, Tanya. I'm worried that the very fact that we're asking whether the beard is over means it's over. Yeah, they always say <laughs> if you ask the question, then you it's have done. the answer already. Um, but I think that what I found through reporting this was just that this age of the big, burly, burly beard that's kind of a, a defining point for men has become passe. Um, so I think that, that we're big beyond that. sort of bunion beard. Yeah, and I, I think that for a while I, I in, was in conversation with um, the head barber at Blind Barber, which is kind of a small chain here in New York um, that specializes in appealing to kind of young professionals like that. And we were talking about the fact that men for a while were going in and the default was to have the beard and to kind of, that was how if you worked, you know, in a creative field or if you were kind of looking to edge up your style, you went in with the beard and that was automatic. Now what we're seeing is that that's not necessarily the route that all guys are taking with that. So there's a lot more going on with men wearing stubble, men maybe having a mustache, men leaving a few days growth, or, or men just going clean shaven. Right, so the, the, the facial hair is not going away entirely. No. I just I, have to point out though, Jacob, that mm -hmm. You did shave your beard. Yes. Was that a result of researching the story, or did that inspire you to write the story? So for the story, um, I've had a beard for um, somewhere between six and eight years. I, I couldn't pinpoint exactly when I started having it, um, and I had had it continuously. Um, and for the story, I did decide to shave off my beard just to see what it was like to kind of put myself in that mindset. I'd been interviewing a few guys that had done it, um, and quite frankly, after two days, I was begging for my beard to come back. How do you feel um, now? I don't I don't like it. It's it, I was very I became very used to having a beard and I think that that was something that I did find through the story is that for men that can grow a beard, that have grown beards, that like having a beard, it's just, it, it, there's no thought to it. It's it's what they like, so it's and what they keep. And you make a good point. I, you know, not all men can grow a beard. So not if you can grow a, a nice beard, go for it. I'm so sad that the beard is going. I mean, I remember my dad had a beard until mm -hmm. I was about five years old, so I associate bearded men with very reliable guys yeah, that yeah. like it. I mean, it, and it is ultimately a personal thing. And as you said, if you can grow a beard, like we have online accompanying the article, the slideshow, and Keanu Reeves is shown kind of up close and he, he has a beard, but it's kind of patchy. It's not really there. It looks a little weird. And so I think that it's a matter of if you have it and it's full and you feel confident with it, then go ahead and keep it. Why do you think it never quite made it to Wall Street and to the law firm, though? Now, see, that's a very interesting question. And that, I think, could, could have been another article in and of itself. That's a matter of, you know, I think our norms really still need a change in order for that to happen. It, it ultimately could be as easy as saying, and this is kind of my theory, if your boss has a beard, then it becomes okay. Until that point, we're really not gonna see that. And in the boardroom, in the at the executive level, we still do not see really any execs. I mean, Jack Dorsey really stands out, the CEO of Twitter, as having a beard, and it really is like, the signature thing of him. I don't think you could write an article about Jack Dorsey and not mention his beard, but that's because he is so singular with that. And so I think that for people that are, you know, younger and working in these, you know, maybe lower tiers of the corporate scale. Um, they don't want to draw too much attention. Exactly. To yeah, it, yeah. It's just a matter of comfort. You never want to be doing something that's going to make you stand out in the cubicles. Right. So tell us, though, about the beard. What does it represent? I mean, mm -hmm. I know it seems to represent a certain level of masculinity, mm -hmm. but isn't it also a little bohemian at the same time? It, it's funny. It is one of those things that, depending on how it's worn and who is wearing it, it can mean a lot of things. Mm -hmm. I think that generally the masculinity edge is certainly there. It is something that traditionally has been associated with, you know, macho men, he men, um, you know, even thinking about like Magnum PI, like he was, he had that mustache and it was kind of very manly in that way. Um, but it is also something that does speak to kind of this counterculture thing. And there is something that is, tethered to individuality with it overall. Now, unfortunately, that individuality has kind of become co-opted and is now ubiquitous, <laughs> right. but it is a way for men to kind of stand out a little bit and kind of add something unique to their look. Um, but you're right, it, it is something that is traditionally done by more bohemian, you know, 
right. people, I would say, people that don't work. Nowadays, in, we once had an Abraham, a bearded president, you know, I know. and he definitely was there. Well, I say long live the beard. I, I, do I hope too. it doesn't go yeah, away. Me too. <laughs> I'm yeah. so glad. I hope mine comes back soon. So, yeah, that's, <laughs> okay, that's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have you back on to see how it's going. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> Jacob, thank you so much for that.